uh, uh, today I'm going to talk about my work, uh, SecPod, a framework for virtualization-based security systems. Uh, this is a joint work with my colleagues from uh, Florida State University, uh, Xi'an Jiao Tong University, and Qihu. Okay, so let's start with the motivation of this work. Um, the kernel page table integrity is very important uh, because uh, the page table will decide the address translation uh, like uh, from the virtual address to the physical address. And the page tables also controls the memory protection. For example, the lower several bits in a page table entry will decide whether a page frame is readable, writable, or executable. And uh, one of the case of using page, page table to do the protection is the data execution prevention, or we call it DEP. So it basically enforces the kernel address space as write, XOR, execute, which means uh, the kernel page frame is either writable or executable, but not both. And this, prevent, uh, this can prevent a lot of attacks for example, the code injection attacks, uh, the co code modification attacks. But there is a problem that uh, because the kernel have to frequently update its memory mapping, uh, the page tables have to be set writable all the time. And therefore, the attackers can subvert the kernel protection by manipulating the page tables. Uh, to address this problem, uh, researchers have proposed to use the virtualization uh, to isolate the security tools. Those out-of-the-box isolation uh, in, uh, can intercept, uh, use the hypervisor to intercept the key kernel events, uh, such as the guest page table update or the control register update. Uh, uh, to, to intercept the guest kernel page table update, uh, the shadow paging is used. So in the early hypervisor design, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, developers used the shadow, pa shadow page tables to virtualize the memory. Uh, and the hi uh, hypervisor maintains the uh, shadow page table, and these shadow page tables are synchronized with the guest uh, page tables. Therefore, the security tools in the hypervisor can intercept each uh, page table uh, updates. And those shadow page tables uh, supersede the guest page tables for the address translation. Uh, to, to simplify the hypervisor design and to improve the per uh, performance, uh, processor vendors have proposed uh, the uh, virtualization hardware ex extension one of the feature is the nested paging. So with nested page table, the guest virtual address will be translated twice uh, into the physical address. And also, uh, nested page table, uh, nested, nested paging can uh, bring a lot of performance improvement over the shadow page tables. Uh, for example, uh, the, MM, uh, the MMU intensive task will get uh, 48 per uh, percent of performance improvement uh, with the nested paging. Uh, but there's a problem that uh, the secure tools cannot intercept the guest memory update with nested page table. This is because the guest is free to change its own page table and, we, and they will not notify the hypervisor. Uh, so can we uh, build a, a system that will enable the existing virtualization-based security tools and run these security tools on the modern virtualization hardware, especially with the nested paging? So that is our work, a SecPod, a framework for virtualization-based security system. Um, here is the threat model and assumptions. So the first, we assume the hardware is trustworthy. For example, the LMMU is properly configured to prevent the DMA attacks. And the booting protocol is, can be trusted. So we assume the kernel have a low time integrity, uh, have the low time integrity protection. And second, we assume the hypervisor is trusted. Uh, such assumptions can be achieved by using the formal verification or the hypervisor integrity protection and monitoring techniques. Uh, last but not least, 
uh, we assume the kernel is benign but may contain vulnerabilities. Therefore, the powerful attackers can change the arbitrary memory of the kernel, especially the page table memory. Okay, so this is the uh, SecPod uh, high-level architecture. So uh, basically, SecPod creates an isolated address space. Uh, we call it the secure space. So the secure space uh, contains the SecPod and security tools, code, and data. And it also maintains a shadow page table pool. So whenever the kernel wants to update the page table, it will uh, send the request to the secure space through this gate. And we call this our first technique, uh, the paging delegation. And uh, this, this entry and, and exist gates are the only entry points for the kernel to access the secure space. So the malicious attacker in, in the normal space may try to access the secure space without this gate. And these sensitive instructions will be trapped by the hypervisor. And the hypervisor will forward these uh, exceptions to the secure space for further handling. And we call this our second technique, uh, execution trapping. So, uh, so now I'm going to talk about these two, uh, two techniques in detail. Uh, the first one is the paging delegation. So SecPod creates the isolated address space from the kernel, and this address space contains the shadow page table. Uh, this figure shows the difference between the shadow page table used in the traditional hypervisor and the shadow page table used in SecPod. So with uh, traditional sh uh, shadow paging, uh, the, the uh, hypervisor will maintain this shadow page, shadow page tables. And wherever the guest wants to update the paging, it will, it will be trapped by the hypervisor. And the hypervisor checks this uh, update and, and finally loads these shadow page tables in the hardware. Uh, this prevents the use of the recent, uh, recent, uh, recently uh, nested paging hardware. So uh, SecPod addresses this problem uh, by using an, an isolated address space. And uh, whenever the page table update, SecPod will forward this update to the secure space. Uh, so, uh, so with SecPod, uh, the secure tools can be run on top of the latest nested paging hardware. Uh, this figure shows uh, the SecPod address, uh, lay, uh, address layout. So, uh, so the normal and secure space are basically uh, using the page table based isolation. Uh, therefore, the kernel cannot directly access the secure space except through the uh, entry and exit gates. And in the secure space, uh, we also map the kernel uh, into the secure space. Uh, uh, we, and we set the kernel code as, re as read only. So the security tools in the secure space can access the guest memory but not execute it. Uh, so is this safe enough for the secure space? Uh, and actually, uh, the attackers might try to enter the secure space without security checks, or like uh, he might want to request uh, the malicious page table update, uh, like uh, map the secure memory in its own address space. Or the attackers might want to misuse the privileged instructions, uh, such, uh, such as loading a malicious page table, or like to disable the paging. Uh, so we address this problem with a secure and efficient context switch, uh, and page table update validation, and the execution trapping. Um, so uh, with a secure and efficient context switch, uh, only requests through the gate can be uh, forwarded to the secure space. And uh, those gates can turn the code to switch the page table, like to load the, the new next page table into the CR3 register and to switch the stack. And the gate also disable and re-enable the interrupt. This is similar with the work uh, presented in the SIEM system. Uh, uh, and uh, you can uh, refer this paper in CCS. And uh, loading the CR3 is also a privileged instruction that will be trapped by SecPod. Uh, but we cannot directly uh, track it in the hypervisor because uh, there are too many context switches uh, happens uh, in the process, uh, in the kernel runtime. Run 
Um, so, uh, so we use uh, the uh, Intel hardware feature, it's called the CR3 target list. So the basic idea is uh, it ca contains several entries and uh, if the page table to be loaded in the CR3 is in this list, it will not, uh, this loading operation will not be trapped by the processor. And for example, uh, in our experimental machine, we have only four entries in the CR3 target list. That means only four page tables can be loaded without being trapped. Uh, but there are actually there are thousands of uh, shadow page tables, uh, one for each running process. Uh, so we address this problem by using a fixed top level page table for the shadow page tables. So whenever we want to uh, switch uh, the context, we will copy the top level page table into this fixed address. So it, it appears that there are, there are only two uh, shadow page tables running in the system. So and th that is suitable, uh, that can be fit in this uh, four uh, entries list. Uh, and and, and uh, a SecPort also uh, enforce the kernel memory integrity by using the page table update validation. So uh, uh, right now, SecPort enforce two policies. The so one is uh, no mapping is, allow uh, is allowed to the secure space code and data. And uh, it, uh, SecPort also enforce the kernel write uh, XOR execute. And to, uh, to fast, uh, to uh, improve the s uh, speed of this checking, we use a fast index table. So it contains the benign code and data hash. So it can speed up the uh, validation pr pr uh, procedures. Uh, and our second technique is called execution trapping. Uh, so SecPort will trap all the malicious privileged instructions in the guest. Such malicious instructions uh, can be uh, intended or unintended. Uh, the in unintended uh, privileged, privileged instructions could be a uh, jump in the middle of our instruction. Uh, that is uh, what it used in the return-oriented programming. Uh, and our SecPort, uh, SecPort hypervisor uh, will trap these events and notify the secure space through an upper call. And this is uh, very similar to the signal delivery mechanism in the traditional operating system. So curious readers, uh, curious audience may uh, re refer to our paper for more detailed information. Uh, here is a list uh, showing some of the potentially uh, malicious, uh, potentially privileged in instructions like move to CR3, which load a new page table. Uh, like for the, this case, like move to the CR0, which will um, change some protection bit in the control uh, register zero. And like load GDT, which will load the global descriptor uh, table and set up the segmentation. Uh, we implement SecPort on Linux platform and run on top of the KVM. So we leverage the Linux uh, Pyro virtualization interface, which is uh, PVMMU OPS. Uh, so this is a, a structure contains a bunch of uh, function pointers, and uh, in this structure, it's uh, all MMU related operations. So after we enable the parallel virtualization, and we set up all these uh, function pointers to the gate code, uh, so whenever the kernel wants to update a page table, it will forward this, uh, requ this request to the uh, gate code and then forward to the secure space. And, and we implement uh, our uh, execution trapping in the KVM hypervisor. But uh, we have to notice that uh, our implement, uh, this is a hypervisor independent implementation. So we can also plant it to a smaller hypervisor which can reduce the TCB. And uh, the security tools uh, can be compiled as an ELF binary and will be loaded into a secure space. Uh, and uh, and to, demo to demonstrate the effective uh, SecPort, uh, we imp implemented an example too uh, to prevent the unauthorized kernel code from being executed. This is uh, similar with the existing systems like uh, Patagonics and Nikola. But the difference is, is 
those two systems are, be, are running on top of the shadow page table based hypervisor, and uh, our tools can run on top of the nested paging hardware. Uh, so uh, uh, I'm going to talk, uh, talk about the security analysis. Uh, so the attackers uh, want to definitely want to modify the secure space memory, but uh, the secure memory is not mapped in the normal space. So the attackers might try to want to map this security ma security memory in, in its own address space. For example, he might try to directly change the page mapping. But uh, in SecPort, the shadow page table is isolated. And, and he, he may also want to ask SecPort to map the secured memory, but this is also prevented by the, SecPort, uh, the shadow page table update validation. Uh, the attackers may also want to misuse some privileged instructions, um, but uh, the privileged instructions will be trapped and further verified. Uh, so we, we did some uh, performance evaluation and uh, with uh, both uh, micro benchmarks and application benchmarks. Uh, so this is a uh, uh, evaluation uh, with the LM bench, which is uh, micro benchmarks showing the system call related uh, operations. We can see that uh, for most of the operations, a sec pod only brings mm, relatively low performance overhead, except for one case, which is a fork system call. So when the uh, operating system uh, have uh, received the fork system call, it will um, create a, a, ch a child process, which involves a lot of memory mapping up operations. But uh, in the real application, it is rarely seen for the application to create, uh, uh, create a child process all the time. So we did some uh, application benchmarks. Uh, in this case, we use uh, the SysBench OLTP which is the online transactional processing benchmarks. Um, we ran the sec port uh, on top of the nested, nested paging hardware, and we compared the result with uh, a modified Linux kernel, both run on top of the nested paging. And so we can see that uh, sec port only brings about 5% uh, of performance overhead uh, on average in this case. Uh, uh, so at, last, at last, I want to summarize some of the related works. Uh, the first category of related works is the virtualization-based security systems, uh, such as the malware analy an analysis, the root key detection and prevention. But those systems are built uh, on top of the old hypervisor with shadow page table. Um, but with, with SecPort, so, uh, the, the similar tools can be built, uh, but uh, it, it can run on top of the latest nested paging hardware. Uh, the second cat category of the related work uh, is uh, the kernel or user space application security. For example, the exploit mitigation techniques like the ASLR or DEP or CFI. And this, all these uh, existing um, Techniques can be built in the secure in the SecPort secure space, so which brings um, better security guarantees. And some recent uh, some recent works like TZ RKP and the, the nested kernel in S plus uh, fifteen uh, talks about a similar idea. They want to isolate and protect the page table. Um, so a SecPort actually joins some uh, share some similar idea with these systems but SecPort also provides an executing environment for the uh, security-related applications. Um, okay, so, uh, so this is a summary. Uh, we present the SecPort as a framework for virtualization-based security systems, and we use two techniques. Uh, first one is paging delegation, and second one is the execution trapping. And thank you for listening, and I'm happy to take your questions. Questions? Actually, I actually have two questions here. Yeah. Uh, first one is here, you assuming the hypervisor is trusted, like Dr. Gray. 
right. and new frames of kernel could be buggy. Yeah, and right. So can you elaborate on that? Like, why do you think the TCP, do you think it because of TCP size, like mm. the hypervisor is smaller, so you can trust it? Right, I think hypervisor, uh, the TCP side of hypervisor is much smaller. Like, we can actually use 1,000 lines of code to write a tiny hypervisor, but the kernel is much, much larger. I guess yeah. you can also use 1,000 lines to write a tiny kernel. Uh-huh, <laughs> what, sorry? Can, can you also use 1,000 lines to write a tiny kernel? What time of the, uh, what type? Using 1,000 lines of code to write a very tiny kernel. Oh, but uh, actually we, we, are, uh, we, we, we aim at running the Linux kernel, so it's a commodity kernel, so it can be larger. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Um, mm -hmm. A second question is like, oh, sorry. Oh, you go ahead. Go. Okay, I just one more question. Why, why do you uh, put the secure space in the guest, not in the hypervisor? Why so the secure it? space is in the guest. Yeah, the secure space is uh, actually like a process address space, but the page table is isolated. Okay. So it's a secure space is, is in the guest kernel. I mean, why do you put it in the guest, not in the uh, in hypervisor? Um, because um, if you put in the hypervisor, it's almost the same with the existing tools, but put the guest, um, it can reduce the performance overhead actually. So. Uh, whenever you want to access this secure space, it's only two context switch instead of a word switch, two word switch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Nathan Doutenhahn from the University of Illinois. Mm -hmm. I like the uh, clever, little clever trick with the CR3 four, four bits, but, um, and I'm wondering, you, in your images you show the GPT uh, as visible to the, the guest. Is it actually visible or is it completely unmapped? Uh, which one? The, the actual page tables to do translations for the guest. Oh, no, this is not visible in the guest, but it's maintained in the, I mean, it's maintained in the secure space in the guest, but the other code of the guest cannot access its secure space. Okay, so, yeah. okay, so the diagrams show it there, but it's actually, in terms of the implementation, it's not visible at all. Uh, yeah, right. Okay. Thank you. So I have a just quick question. So uh -huh. in the evaluation, you have an example of like protecting the Cisco table, like to prevent the attacker from modifying the Cisco table. Um, um, yeah, right. So can you uh, comment on what if people use software-based fault isolation techniques to achieve the same goal? Um, what's the pros or cons compared oh, to your yeah. approach? Oh, so, so you mean the uh, SFI for the right. addition of the page table? Yes. Um, I, th I think, I think, um, uh, I mean, I think uh, SFI for the page table, um, I think this is a good question. I, I never th thought about, but I think both, uh, I mean, we, we use uh, address space to isolate the page table. Um, it shares some uh, idea of the, uh, for, uh, for isolation, so, but, but I have no idea about which kind of SFI you are talking, but we can discuss it later. Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, thank the speaker again. Yeah.